What's up boys and girls? We're back with another Halloween movie review and this is Halloween 5 The Revenge of Michael Myers. So as always I'll give you a little bit of backstory about the film, go through the plot and then give you my thoughts um, at the end of the video. So the film itself was released in 1989 and is obviously the fifth installment. It stars once again Donald Pleasance, who again played Dr. Sam Loomis, and Daniel Harris, who returned as Jamie Lloyd. And the film takes place exactly one year after the events of Halloween 4, The Return of Michael Myers. So, again, Michael returns to Haddonfield to murder his niece, Jamie, who is now mute for some reason. Dr. Loomis tries to save the day with the help of Sheriff Mika. Um, the film's on-screen title, title, sorry, do not display the Revenge of Michael Myers subtitle bit, which was used in all of the promotional material, you know, like TV spots, trailers, merchandising, stuff like that. The main title simply says Halloween 5. So, anyway, I'll go through the plot. So, October 31st, 1988, Michael Myers, played by Don Shanks, is shot and falls down a mineshaft. That's the ending of the fourth one. He gets up and stumbles upon a hermit who bandages him up and basically looks after him. Michael falls into a coma and you know this web the hermit guy looks after him and you know makes sure he's okay. One year later, October 30th, 1989, Michael wakes up, kills a hermit guy, dares thanks for you, and returns to Haddon's field where his niece Jamie is obviously still living because why would you move from somewhere after something like that had happened after nearly being killed by michael so jamie by now has been committed to a children's hospital having been rendered mute due to psychological trauma uh, suffering from nightmares and seizures and being treated for attacking her foster mother under michael's influence but exhibits sort of signs of a telepathic link with her uncle michael which is a bit weird but it plays out well so dr loomis becomes aware of this link they've got and tries to convince the sheriff that michael is still alive meanwhile showing signs of a sort of what's the word i'm looking for metaphysical i think is the word connection to jamie michael tracks her uh, to a local child mental health clinic um, he kills her sister Rachel uh, stabs her in the chest with a pair of scissors and then begins stalking uh, the friend Tina who was in the fourth one um, and kills Tina's boyfriend Mike with a sharp rake to his head now Tina was in the false one quite a bit but I didn't really mention it she's like Rachel's best friend and at the beginning of the film she goes to visit um, Jamie in the children's hospital and sneak her in through the window because she takes her dog with her a big dog Doberman and she's playing and I mean the dog's called Max I think and um, even though Jamie's supposed to be mute, she can sort of say certain things, and Max is one of the words that she says, and she, you can see that she absolutely loves that dog, she thinks the world of him. Um, so they got to see her, and then they get kicked out eventually, and this is how it all leads up to Rachel getting killed, and Tina's boyfriend, like I say, he cops a rake to his head. So later on that night, Tina and her friends, Sam and Spitz, go to a Halloween party out at a farm. So, sensing that Tina's in danger, Jamie, who can now talk again, goes to warn her, and her friend Billy goes with her. So, while Sam and Spitz are having sex in the barn, Michael murders him. I mean, he, he takes him out. Spitz is impaled with a pitch, a pitchfork, 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 and Sam gets sliced across the chest, Grim Reaper style, with a garden scythe. Michael then leaves the barn and kills the two deputies that Loomis had asked to keep an eye on Tina for her protection. Uh, these two coppers aren't really much good. Um, they're, they're just very there for comedic effect at times. 
So anyway, um, after the party, Tina goes to the barn because she knows where, you know, obviously what they were up to and uh, discovers the bodies. Michael chases Tina and by this point, Jamie and Billy have found her and he chases them all with a car. Tina sacrifices herself to save Jamie and Michael stabs her in the chest and takes her out. Loomish, Sheriff Mika and the rest of the police arrive on the scene and rescue Jamie and Billy. Jamie finally sort of agrees that, you know, she's willing to be like the bait in a trap to help Loomis stop Michael for good. So with their help, Loomis lures Michael back to his old abandoned childhood home, which is still standing. So they're in the old Myers house. Loomis and the police create a setup. Jamie senses that Michael has arrived at the clinic and Billy is in danger, which causes the sheriff, along with most of his backup, to leave the Myers house. Eventually, Michael arrives at his old home and just takes out the two remaining policemen. Loomis tries to sort of reason with him, but Michael just knocks him out and then goes after little Jamie. Jamie hides in an old laundry chute um, and she ends up being chased up and down it. Um, by my um, by Michael and she eventually has to escape it because he starts stabbing through the metal of the chute so she races upstairs to attic and finds a coffin that had been stolen from the cemetery earlier and the bodies of Rachel Mike and Rachel's dog Max another dog cops it in this series and I that is my biggest grab this series a lot of dogs get killed and there's no need kill people all you want I have no problem with people being killed but leave the dogs alone so obviously you know she's really upset anyway michael finds her but before he can kill her she tries to appeal to him you know like tries to sort of find some sort of humanity in him at jamie's request michael takes off his mask however jamie touches his face and this just sends him off he just goes mental loomis appears uh, and then using Jamie's bait again lures Michael into a trap to weaken him with a tranquilizer gun so when Michael hits the floor uh, Loomis beats the crap out of Michael with a wooden plank suffers a stroke and collapses Michael's locked up in the sheriff's station to eventually be escorted to a maximum security prison where Mika says he will remain until the day he dies. Five films in, you've not killed him yet. Oh, well, uh, four films in, and you've not killed him yet. Uh, and then Jamie responds, he'll never die. So Jamie gets escorted out to be taken home, and this mysterious man in black, who appeared earlier in the film, you just basically see him getting off a, car, a, a bus and then um, just barging past this little kid and all you see is these black trousers these like cowboy boots with silver tips on but you don't see anything else and then you see him a bit later on but then he's sort of like blinking you miss him sort of thing and then he goes in to the police station kills all the officers including sheriff mika and then obviously after in the aftermath jamie walks through the station and discovers that michael's cell is empty and she just starts crying. So this guy has obviously caused um, all this commotion and you know rescued Michael as it were, released him from the prison. So I'm gonna go through my thoughts now on this film. First of all, Mike is a dick and I was well happy to see him get killed. And yeah, he's one of the, he's one of those characters that I don't know if he's supposed to piss you off, pardon my French, but he do, really does annoy you. So when he finally cops it, I was like, brilliant, he's out of the equation, so I don't have to put up with him anymore. And the sort of kids that got killed that I really were bothered about were Rachel and Tina, and obviously Max the dog. You know, as I said, kill all the people you want, but leave the dogs alone. So, yeah, like I said, there seems to be a few dogs killed in these movies, and it's like, you know, why dogs? 
doing any harm. They're not going to tell police where you are or anything. Just let them go. Um, the big thing that annoyed me was the cowboy looking guy that I mentioned the guy in black who sets Michael free. You know, who is he? Where's he come from? What what is he relevant to the story? Um, it may all be clear in the next film. I don't know. I'm gonna have to wait and see when I watch, you know, Halloween six and see if that explains anything at all. Overall, I wasn't blown away by this instalment. Um, I guess it had to happen soon, you know, I was four for four. And like I said, this one didn't really blow me away. So, you know, it had to happen. Um, obviously, if you're going to sort of binge watch the Halloween films or, you know, do the sort of thing that me and Josh are and just, you know, well, binge watch them or watch them as they go, you kind of have to watch five to carry on watching them. Um, I'd love to say you don't, but unfortunately you do. But yeah, um, I, I didn't rate it. But like I say, if you're working your way through them, you, ne you need to watch it to sort of carry on to part six, which obviously um, will probably or hopefully have more answers about this dude in black. So yeah, that'll do it, guys. That's my review of Halloween 5. As always, if you guys have any comments, um, if you disagree and think it's a really good film, please comment down below. Uh, if you've enjoyed this video, uh, feel free to check out my other ones. If you haven't already, please subscribe. Hit the little bell to get notifications for when new videos come up, especially if you're watching this series of films. Uh, these videos, sorry, of the Halloween films. And, you know, even if you're not bothered about subscribing or anything, just, just leave a like. Uh, it's much appreciated. And it lets me know that I'm doing something right. So that'll do it, guys, uh, for this video. I'll wrap it up there. And as always, I shall see you all for Halloween 6. Bye for now, guys. Take care.